Good morning, sewers and quilters. My name is Mary Ann, and today I'm going to show you how to make a very easy quilt block. It consists of just two colors and um, two different blocks, two different squares to make this block. I've outlined here how I did it with the blues and yellows. Um, the center is blue, these are yellow, and the others are blue again. And what it does is it makes a star right here. So I'm going to show you how to piece those blocks. This is called a friendship block. And actually every block, or almost, I guess every block when you're quilting has a name. So if you told somebody, I'm going to make a quilt with the friendship star, they would all know that you were referring to this star here. Um, we're going to cut these squares as a square. These, we would take a bigger square and cut it in half. That's on the diagonal and that's the stretchy piece. So you have to be really, really careful when you're doing that. Um, I want to give you a couple hints before we start actually cutting the fabric and putting it together. One is your rotary cutter is especially sharp. So you always want to make sure you're cutting away from you, not towards your body. You need to change your blades often. Um, if you're doing a big project, you should probably change them every project. If not, when your blade starts skipping and gets harder to cut, that's the time that you need to change it. Um, let's get started now. I've already pre-cut some fabric, but I'm going to show you how to measure and pre-cut your own. These squares here would be for these four blocks, the A blocks. This yellow one is my center block. And these are the pieces for the star. When you're cutting your pieces, this piece here is a four and a half inch piece. These are four and a half inch pieces. These are going to be cut four and seven eighths, but when you cut them down, they will be um, the equivalent of the four and a half inch pieces. Okay. For the yellow, we're going to cut the center block. And the center block is exactly four and a half square. So I've got my ruler here. Oh, I know what else I wanted to tell you. When you're cutting, you should always make sure you're cutting with the ruler on the part of the fabric that you're going to use. Because if your ruler slips or your blade slips, you don't want to cut into the part that you're using. The reason accurate cutting is so important is because if you're even just an eighth of an inch off, it's going to make your whole block and your whole quilt off and I'm going to go ahead and cut that square. Again, I'm cutting away from my body. So I have the center one cut. These corner ones are going to be four and a half. So we're going to go ahead and take this blue fabric, and you can make this in any combination of fabrics you want. I chose the yellow and the blue because to me it looked like a star in the sky. So this will be my four and a half inch block. Your ruler is probably, if you have a quilting ruler like this, it's probably got eighth inch markings. So um, the little longer line in between the, the different inches is your half inch. Then there's a quarter inch and then you'll also see the eighth of an inch. Okay, this is four and a half inches, cutting away from me. Okay, this is four and a half inches. It's really important to try to get your cutting as precise as you can. And one of the rules when you're quilting is to measure twice, but cut one so you don't waste your fabric. Okay, so we have one of them. Actually, I should have just gone ahead and cut all of them. I'll cut the rest here. Okay, I'm gonna cut some more of the four and a half inch blocks for the corners. Okay, so I cut out two of these for you, and I have some others already cut out, so I'm not gonna, going to keep cutting these blue ones. Um, these are gonna be your 
and units. Now that's my center piece. Now the rest of the blocks, we're going to be cutting these four and seven eighths. And that's because when we put, put them together, they're going to form a four inch block. Four and seven eighths. A little line between the three quarters and the next inch. Nobody is perfect, but you do have to try to be as accurate as you can with your cutting. This is my four and seven eighths, and I'm going to cut a four and seven eighths out of the blue. Now the way we're going to make these paste blocks here is taking a yellow four and seven eighths and a blue seven eighths, four and seven eighths, and we're going to sew them together face to face. Make sure you line them up. You can um, pin them if you need to, or you can just sew them by holding them, by holding them together. Try to make sure they're fairly even with each other. I'm going to take a pencil and draw from corner to corner so I know exactly where I'm cutting. And actually, another thing I use is this, it's called a friction pen. You can buy it at Staples or you can buy it at most quilting stores, sewing stores. And it's a pen that marks like a pencil, but when you iron on it, it erases so that you can erase any marks that you make on your fabric. I'm going to make that mark and we're going to sew a quarter inch on each side of that. I'm actually going to cut it right now. You can do it either way. You can, some people have, and actually I could do it that way, a quarter inch ruler where you put it right on the line and then you do a quarter inch from there. The reason I want to cut it though is because I have a specific quarter inch foot, which I've shown on previous sessions. So it's a lot easier to um, figure it out with the foot than it is to figure it out without cutting it. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna use my rotary cutter, cutter on the first line that I made from one corner to the next. And again, try to get it right on the corner if you can. Okay. Okay. I'm going to take the pieces to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a blue and a yellow together across the diagonal, being really careful not to stretch it as I sew. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other piece. I'm using my quarter inch foot, which I'll show you again at the end because it's so nice. It, it makes the seam completely even if you run it against the foot. Okay. 
you can actually um, chain stitch this. That what that means is you don't need to cut it off at the end. You can just do your next piece too. I just wanted to show you this. Okay, so this is my piece that I sewed together. I'm going to set the seams by pressing them together. And then I'm going to open it and press towards the darker side. You always press towards the darker side if one's light and one's dark. So I'm going to do that, press along the darker side. Okay. And now you can see there are little ears sticking up here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and trim those off. Okay. If your ruler has markings on it like this, you can actually put that on your seam to use to cut. So it looks like my seam is pretty even. I'm just going to cut these little rabbit ears off. The other thing I need to mention, in order to keep your um, ruler from slipping, because they will tend to slip and then you'll um, cut your fabric in accurately, is you can buy these little rubber things that you put on your ruler, little round circles, and that helps to keep the, fab the ruler from slipping on your fabric. Okay, so now we have one of the cornerstones, and this is going to go... I'm sorry, this is not a cornerstone. This is the middle section. This is going to go with the yellow part up towards the center and the blue part down. Okay. I'm going to sew four more of these like this. Matching face to face and so quarter of an inch. With quilting as opposed to other sewing, you use a quarter inch stitch for pretty much everything unless it tells you otherwise. When you're doing regular sewing, usually it'll tell you um, a half inch or five eighths or three eighths or something like that. But with quilting, you're always using a quarter of an inch seam. Okay, finished setting the seam. I brought my water bottle because it really does help to make the uh, seam more permanent. The other thing some people like to use, and I have used it, is either starch or something called best press. It makes your fabric nice and crisp. It's easier to uh, iron and, and get it nice and squared up and all. Okay, again, I'm pressing towards the dark. I want that seam to go towards the dark, dark pot spot. Okay. I'm going to cut off the rabbit ears. You can do them like I did before with the uh, rotary cutter, or you can just snip them. They're just little tiny things. This one's going to be here. So it's going to be like this. I have my blues cut out. So I'm going to put a yellow with a blue. I'll do my quarter inch seam. And I'm going to do another one too. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead to what I showed you. I'm going to chain stitch these two. It actually it goes faster and you save on thread because you just go from one to the other. This sewing machine, actually most of your newer sewing machines have a button on the front of them someplace. It looks like a little tiny dot. I'm sorry, it looks like um, triangles and one's darkened. And that's your um, up and down position for your needle. So I can sew with the needle always stopping in the down position. 
which is a good way because your fabric doesn't shift over here that way. And you go right to the position where it should be. Okay, and I said we we're going to chain stitch, so we're going to do the next one. And what I usually do is just pull that just a little tiny bit to get it away from the other one so we can cut it apart afterwards. <laughs> okay, so we've just made two of those squares now. Slip them apart between them. I'm going to go ahead and press the seam. And then I'm going to go ahead and shift it to the other side. Check the back, make sure it's right. <clears throat> This is going to be the block up top. And this is the block over on the upside. Actually, what I'm going to do, since I used two different yellows, is I'm going to switch them around a little bit so that they're on opposite sides. Okay, so we have our square all set up. And all we have to do now is sew this row, this row, this row, and then we're going to put the three rows together. So I will go ahead and take it to my sewing machine and do that. Matching all my sides. <clears throat> if this was a longer piece, I would probably pin it together or um, use the clips to put it together. But since I'm working with such small squares, I'm just holding it in the right place. Another thing that helps is to actually label your pieces, one, two, three, or A, B, C, so that you're putting in the right place. You'll see I keep referring up to my diagram to make sure I'm putting it in the right way. Set the seam, and we want to iron them towards the dark side. So now you have your first row of the square done. We're going to go ahead and do the second row.
Now, I said you always press towards the dark side, but actually our seams are on the yellow side, both of them. So what I'm going to do is press these the opposite way. These are pressed towards the outside. These I'm going to press towards the inside block. And that's just so you don't have a lot of bulk at all, this, at all the seam lines. Okay, so we want to press towards the center block. Press this one towards the center block. And then, as you can see, when we put them together, these will be going opposite ways, and that makes it a lot easier to mess the seams and not have all that bulk in the middle. This one doesn't iron down well, it will look better. Some people like to use starch when they're doing this. I, a lot of times, just use water. If my fabric is a little bit flimsy, sometimes I'll use that best press. Makes your seams nice and crisp. Okay, so we have that done. We're going to do one more. Trying to get this nice and even here. piece to come on. You can see how the block is kind of coming together now. You can see that it's going to look like a star. Press these to the first. I'll set them. And then we're going to press them to the outside. Okay, now that we have our three rows made, oops, now that we have our three rows made, you can see it's a star. And what you're going to do is sew each row together. And because we press the seams in opposite directions from the middle to the ends, you can nest them. They just line up right against each other. Now for this part, I usually do pin it just to make sure that it stays right where I want it to. So we'll go ahead and get our pins out. And I'm going to pin towards where I'm going to sew so I can pull it out because if you try to sew over a pin, you're going to break your needle. Okay, that's not quite nested. That looks pretty good. It looks like when I sew it, the two um, seam lines are going to meet. I'll do the same thing with this one. If you find when you're sewing that one of your pieces of these rows is a little bit longer than the other, 
you put the longer one on the un underside when you're sewing it, and that'll kind of shrink it up so that it matches better. You always put the, if one side's uh, a little bit off, put that on the bottom. Okay, so please look perfect. And again, those seams look like they're going to match okay. So we will go ahead and start sewing that. Okay, now, as you can see, I've got dark here and dark here, so I'm going to press it that way. I'm going to press it to the outside. Always check your back, make sure that the seam went the way you wanted it to. Okay, so that one's done. We've got one last piece to put on. That should go that way. Again, what I'm trying to do here is really nest those seams that they come perfect with each other. Okay, so this last row on and our block will be completed. Sometimes backstitch at the end of each row when I'm doing it. You really don't need to in the end because once you connect all the um, blocks together, they're going to be caught in another seam. So again, I'm going to go ahead and set these seams. Check them to make sure that all the seams are going the right way. And I'm going to go ahead and press towards the dark seam. Now, as you can see, these matched perfectly. These are a tiny bit off. If that bothers you, use your seam ripper and Redo that row so that it matches. If it doesn't bother you, believe me, when it's in the quilt, nobody will notice it. I would probably take mine out though and redo it. So this is your friendship block. Hope you have fun doing it. It's an easy block. Um, there aren't a lot of unusual pieces to cut. The seams are fairly easy to go together. Um, you just need to be careful about matching them up. 
I'm real happy with these. They came out so well. I'm not happy with these. So I am going to go ahead and replace them when I get a chance. So thank you for watching. I hope you have fun making the friendship block. You don't have to use the colors I did. I chose these colors because the blue reminded me of the sky and the yellow reminded me of a star. But you could do it in any color combination you want, depending on how you want your book to look. It's really personal preference. Thank you. See you next week.